But it's her dad. I mean, I don't understand. So I guess the point I'm making is your... Have you never disagreed with your father, Tucker? Not even on a cold winter night? As Mr. Carlson looked down upon you from on high? Separated by the 13 maids, I'm sure. It's like, oh, son, what a disaster you turned out to be. You slid out on your mother's filth and grew into this. Silver spoons all around, and yet here you are, a consistent disappointment to me. So, I'm sure a lot of you know about uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, the two of us have been at odds for a while. Me and Joe, you know, we're not uh, we're not exactly the best of pals. Uh, he has never returned my calls, so maybe that's it. I'm just deeply hurt, and he's been ghosting me for a while. Or it could be that I've found that he seems to really platform a lot of the worst people on the planet. Uh, you know, my biggest gripe with Joe is usually the transphobia, both his transphobia and the fact that he platforms people that have incredibly transphobic views, and then gives them an audience. And he happens to have the largest podcast, so the largest podcast in the world is promoting a lot of transphobic ideas. I think it's a net uh, negative to society uh, that this continues to happen. But here we are, and this is the world that uh, we live in. Anyways, uh, now Joe Rogan has started to praise Tucker Carlson, which means there's a whole new dynamic to Joe. Now, I don't think Joe Rogan is a right-winger. I don't think Joe Rogan is an alt-writer. Uh, I don't think Joe Rogan is any of those things. I think Joe Rogan is a malleable piece of fudge. I think Joe Rogan, whoever his interviewee at the time, or whoever he has on the show, he'll give an interview with them, and then uh, whatever their opinions are, he's probably going to reflect on them. There are a couple, uh, obviously, uh, differences between, uh, say, his conversations with Dave Rubin, where he did push back a bit, but those are, I think, in the minority uh, in terms of, like, his ability to actually have uh, a cohesive way of pushing back against uh, the worst people imaginable. Anyways, the fact now that he's defending uh, Tucker Carlson is pretty ridiculous, and I wanted to see why at first, so I haven't actually listened to the clip yet. Let's take a look. This one's yours. The other really? one's Tucker's. Yes. Right. Oh, um, I don't know if that's good. Uh, <laughs> no, you guys, like, you guys are, like, completely different, but you're, like, the same in, in the most important way, which is, like, you don't Ouch. buy into bullshit. Well, like, we'll also talk to anybody. Tucker has a lot of left-wing people on, and he doesn't disparage them or criticize them or mock them. You know, he has... So what are, what are his examples for that? It's, like, what, Jimmy Dore? Jimmy Dore, Brett Weinstein was another one of the ones. You know, Brett Weinstein, classic classic lefty that's for sure yep yep oh glenn greenwald can't forget glenn greenwald probably in that crew as well yep he had brett weinstein on who's a very progressive he has tulsi gabbard yeah. on he tulsi has people on. i mean he, tulsi the I think turf. he's unfairly labeled because people want to marginalize him and dismiss him immediately Turfsy. Great. And call him a white separatist or a white supremacist or whatever word that makes you a part of a list of people that you can never associate with they like to yeah. initially do that about him but I think his discussions that he has on his show are some of the most nuanced in that he is willing to have conversations with anybody from all these different whatever people. Okay. Tucker Carlson has an agenda every single day and he brings on people. And if it happens to be someone like Glenn Greenwald, he brings on useful idiots who are going to be able to promote his agenda on the show. It's usually white nationalist talking points, okay? It's like, it's I got white supremacy for you, but I'm going to like, you know, doll the whole thing up. There's going to be a whole, but like, we're not even going to use traditional dog whistles, all right? We're just going to get out there and we're going to talk about how we care about Judeo-Christian values, Western values. And we feel that there's a lot of problems with immigration and high amounts of immigration into this country that are changing the demographics, the demographics of voters, mind you. I'm not trying to say this has anything to do with race. I'm just saying that I have strong Western values and I want to see those reflected in the kind of people that come. So I'm not replaced. It's kind of like there's a great replacing of people. And you know, you know what I'm talking about? People that have been, you know, in issues with college censorship or, you know, so-called progressive college students have censored professors from discussing certain topics or... You know, he, he'll talk about all kinds of things. And I think that this is the cancel culture you always hear about, but seldom see. Like, I, I've seen a handful of people who have suggested this and then done just self cancellations. Like, oh, yeah, you know, if, if we let them have their way, then uh, these neo Marxists, they're just going to make us use weird words like fey and fem and z and zer. And then and then what next? You know, it's the decline of society. Everything will be over. We're all going to go to prison. Every single one of us. 
Like, uh, no, didn't get fired, didn't go to jail. Total amount of people in jail right now for misusing pronouns in Canada. Big old zero. That's where we're at. That's very important in this time that you have people like him. Yes. Yeah. As much as he gets criticized and as much as I get criticized, like him. There's, cool. there's a very important thing that is happening when people are discussing uncomfortable issues and it's we have to figure out what's right and what's wrong and you don't get that by just buying into the official narrative right that, i mean that's you guys are both suspicious of the official narrative and it's funny you know tucker carlson is you know like could there be a sort of like whiter guy than tucker but at heart he's a popular that's the true statement that's been said so far i truly believe that and you know i don't necessarily agree with him about everything or you know but but at heart he's a populist and at heart you're a populist and you know, I think I've become, I, I, maybe, I don't know if populist is the right word or the wrong word, but I am so... Like, you know how they always say words have no meaning? Are they trying to change the meaning of populist just to, like, straight up racist? Like, white supremacist? Struck by the left's willingness to buy in to the, to the narrative that, the, especially that the pharma industry is selling right yeah. now. And it's, I don't understand it. And I think, you know, like you... Why do they keep saying that? Why do they keep saying like, oh, well, the left really seems cucked by big pharma. Yeah, no criticisms for big pharma from the left. The left has been screaming about big pharma for so long. Like all of us were consistently like, big pharma is an enormous problem. The problem is the way these uh, companies are structured. They spend more money on advertising than they do on research and development. And at the same time, a lot of their funding usually comes from governmental programs. So they will be able to sell products and get funding for those same products while at the same time hold on to copyrights. It's really bad that they have copyrights on things that are essential medicines. People shouldn't be able to copyright essential medicines because if they do that, then people have to pay a fuck ton of money for it for an elongated period of time until the copyright expires and then it can become generic. And even then it's still incredibly expensive on top of which they will not say uh, share the ability to uh make these kind of recipes the ability to manufacture these life-changing medicines because there's a financial incentive to holding on to that copyright it, it's like fucking over and over again the left is consistently screaming about that it, there has been no change in that just because the workers, in this case, the scientists, have invented these miracle things, these magical miracle things, things that, like, I would ha never have any ability to even process uh, how they're made. Just because mRNA technology exists doesn't mean that I'm suddenly uh, simping for the fucking pharma industry. Fuck the pharmaceutical industry. I don't think there should be a profit motive behind medicine at all. Period. End of sentence. Like, break them up. Do whatever you got to do. Fuck the pharmaceutical industry. And at the same time, get vaccinated. Every one of you. Every single one of you. Get vaccinated. Holy hell. Like, you don't buy into that off the... And that's a good thing. If you suffer from diabetes type 2... I suffer from Joe Rogan. He's the problem. Okay, so just so we have a quick refresher on Tucker Carlson, in case anyone thinks I'm just, uh, you know, a lefty being hy hyperbolic as always. Uh, so, Tucker Carlson, if you're wondering why so many people are being robbed, raped, and killed in American cities right now, George Soros is the reason for that. George Soros understands that. Soros has an eye for vulnerabilities. He became extraordinarily rich by finding ways to exploit the weaknesses in systems that he did not himself build. In the early 1990s, Soros became a billionaire by shorting the British pound, crushing the Bank of England in the process. He went on to repeat those tactics and other financial crises in countries around the world. And then George Soros turned his attention to the United States, where he decided he would fundamentally change our society. Soros began funding politicians oh, and good political you, initiatives that had very little popular <sighs> support. Uh, Lance, I'm here to call you spineless. I call this uh, Steiny fans keep regurgitating. They're so pathetic. Hey, would a spineless man be fucking censored, son, banned on fucking Twitch, too hot to handle? Yeah, that's right. I speak truths, okay? Sometimes uncomfortable truths. Yeah, try and deal with it. You can't. That's just the way of the world. I was just too true. Uh, and you got a hot day tonight? You look dressed up? No, it's because I'm, I'm playing a lawyer for today. I'm going to pretend to be a lawyer. But because so few were paying attention to what he was doing, he often got his way. On those rare occasions when Soros was criticized for doing this, for subverting our democracy, he and his allies in the news media screamed bigotry. He was yet another oppressed billionaire victim of discrimination. And mostly that tactic works because it always works. So he kept doing it. It does make it better. Like, it's not perfect, but I feel slightly less annoyed by Tucker Carlson if there's, like, a smiling Chico sleeping instead of him on screen. If you're wondering why so many people are being robbed, raped, and killed in American cities right now, 
George Soros is part of the reason for that. Soros has funded. Yeah, the, the 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 bit was that it's it's he's dog whistling. So I showed you a dog, you know, a, a smiling dog. This is. Oh, hold on. Oh no! Why is there got to be noise outside? Now he's all awake. You're not smiling no more. Sorry, everyone. The bit's over. Classic bit, though. Am I right? The campaigns of left wing ex extremists in district attorney races all over the country, in cities like Philadelphia, St. Louis, Chicago, Boston. Traditionally, a prosecutor's job is to enforce the law. Oh shit, Shadrach Mould, thank you so much for the incredibly generous $20 with the message that deserves 20 Canadian dollars. It's true, everybody. 20 Canadian dollars. Uh, I, I cannot thank you enough. That's incredibly generous of you. Oh, <sighs> but sorry. He looks like he's related to his wife. That's not his wife. That can't be his wife. Is, is that his actual wife? Oh. Well, uh, I guess narcissism? Soros wanted rigid ideologues who would refuse to do that and instead let murderers and rapists go free while allowing our society itself to degrade and collapse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about this? An unrelenting stream of immigration. But why? Well, Joe Biden just said it to change the racial mix of the country. That's the reason, to reduce the political power of people whose ancestors lived here and dramatically increase the proportion of Americans newly arrived from the third world. And then Biden went further. He said that non-white DNA is the, quote, source of our strength. Imagine saying that. This is the language of eugenics. It's horrifying. But there's a reason Biden said it. In political terms, this policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. They brag about it all the time. But if you dare to say it's happening, they will scream at you with maximum hysteria. And here you have Joe Biden confirming his motive on tape with a smile on his face. So um, in that one, I guess there's a lot less mask uh, if you just wanted it to be unfiltered. The first one had had some dog whistles, of course, and some classic stuff. But this one, this one's just straight up. And like, you know, go online, find any supercut you want uh, or just watch him talking to uh, Victor Orban for a little while and then see how that conversation goes. That'll be quite enlightening to you and talking about uh, replacements and demographs and, of course, religious minorities and all those kind of things. And so Tucker Carlson, I mean, you don't have to take it from me. You can take it from actual white supremacists. Take it uh, from members of the KKK. Uh, take it from uh, the ex-leader of the KKK uh, who has spoken out and said, uh, oh, and Richard Spencer as well, who has said openly that Tucker Carlson is the greatest example of someone who's reflecting our views in the mainstream. Uh, and this isn't a secret, by the way. It's something that's pretty well known. Uh, like most people who analyze media, it, it's not like, oh, wow, yeah, oh, phew, well, that's surprising. I can't believe you'd say that, Lance. But uh, yeah, no, I see it now. So it's extra weird to me that people like uh, Glenn Greenwald would try to say that he's a socialist. And now Joe Rogan is coming out and saying that, uh, well, actually, at the end of the day, he's not as bad as everyone is saying. Uh, he at least platforms people on the left which, by the way, his examples were what? Brett Weinstein, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard, like uh, one of the people who just recently went on some by choice uh, mission to perform uh, whatever horrific torture and atrocities uh, that were being committed in a unknown African country. Uh, she would not let us know where she was traveling to, but uh, she has returned from her tour of duty. Uh, and also is just one of the most prominent turfs uh, in politics. I'd say operating right now. So that's that's good. Brett Weinstein, uh, he's the member of the intellectual dark weeb who recently not only started promoting ivermectin, but actually took ivermectin on camera uh, to try and promote it to more people, which of course led to the horse pace craze of uh, the 2021s, which will be remembered. Uh, I did see that avail. Yeah, Trudeau is, uh, he's doing the same thing Trump did, only uh, <laughs> more brazenly. It's great to see. So anyways, here's some examples of Tucker Carlson uh, having people on and uh, doing the exact opposite of what Joe Rogan said. Uh, it's shocking stuff, but it turns out young women can be interested in both fashion and politics. The concept seemed to bamboozle Fox News Tucker Carlson on Friday, but luckily Teen Vogue writer Lauren Duca was there to help. Duca was roundly praised for her recent article on the magazine's website entitled Donald Trump is Gaslighting America. She appeared on Carlson's show ostensibly to discuss an uh, incident where a man confronted the president elects the daughter Ivanka Trump on a jet blue flight, but mostly to school the TV anchor. Do we have a clip of it? Oh, it's not the clip. Oh, nice. 
Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. As you've doubtless seen on the news everywhere, a member of the tolerant left screamed at Ivanka Trump and her family, including her young kids, on a JetBlue flight yesterday. The man, who was a lawyer from Brooklyn, berated her about her father before being kicked off the flight for disorderly conduct. Even a lot of liberals thought his behavior went way too far, but not all of them thought that. Some of them thought it was justified, and that would include our next guest. She's Lauren Duca. She's a journalist, and she tweeted this earlier today. Ivanka Trump is poised to become the most powerful woman in the world. Don't let her off the hook just because she looks like she smells good. Lauren Duca joins us. Now, Lauren, thanks for coming on. Hi. Thanks for Hi. having me. So I think, of course, it goes without saying that it's valid that you disagree with Trump and you have your own set of political views and perhaps you disagree with Ivanka Trump. I wonder, though, screaming at a mom and her kids on an airplane seems like a violation of privacy and decency and good manners, and it raises the question, what are the venues where you shouldn't scream your political views at people? Would a funeral I've never seen this. Has everyone in chat already seen this? Because I already like the setup. It'll be out of bounds, church, her son's brisk. Like, what are the rules on that? Oh, at a, <laughs> at a brisk. Um... Yeah, well, I think what is a nonpartisan issue is that air travel is horrific, and I don't think anybody should be enduring confrontations in She's the air, the be it Ava here. Ivanka Trump with her children or just any other human being in a tin can and feeling dehydrated. But, um, right. And I think that the fact that she is with her children is significant, and I do also think that you know a mother in public who's a public figure, you know, there are certain levels of decorum that we should be thinking about. At the same time, she does have an incredibly powerful position and she's not just a mother. She is a powerful, powerful woman who's connected very closely to the president-elect, not just as his daughter, but in many ways as a business confidant and advisor. And I think that we haven't quite been able to define what all those roles mean. So while I don't, you know, I don't want anyone being yelled at on a plane. I, I don't want anyone yelling at me on a plane. I don't want to yell at anyone on a plane. But I think that, you know, Ivanka's incredibly compelling brand and presence and role as a mother and successful woman, those are interesting and attractive elements of her right. brand. But I don't know that, you know, where do those protections end to? Kind of would ask you the same question as well, the funeral but, but, but wait a second. Thing. That's not at all what your tweet suggested. In addition to the one that we just read, you put, I think we can put it on the screen. My you tweet tweeted, didn't even, uh, didn't talk about the plane at all, actually. So what are you referring to? Well, it was to? within <laughs> the, con look, Ivanka Trump was in the news about because she was screamed out on the airplane and you say don't <laughs> let her off tweets. the hook and then you go on to say in another tweet Ivanka has it all and by that I mean a job of family and sinister complicity mm -hmm. in aiding the most aggressively anti-woman candidate of our time yeah sinister complicity she's his daughter what is that she's I mean, a sir she was a surrogate frequently throughout represented him in terms of women issue women's issues she had isn't she pretty liberal interviews. on women's issues and she did speeches on his behalf where she represented a, a platform of women's empowerment. And um, in terms of having it all, I, you know, I think she's an incredibly successful, brilliant woman. The fact that she was able to balance him out on these issues where he has talked about defending Planned Parenthood and being against abortion and these typically liberal women's issues that she sort of is a cushion for, I think we need to investigate those things a little more critically, a little more rigorously and not be blinded mm -hmm. by the fact that she looks like she smells Ugh. like vanilla. Okay, she looks like she smells like vanilla. I mean, who's objectifying women here? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh my I God. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually asking a serious uh, question. My point is she's a beautiful, I don't, gorgeous, I don't care what she looks like nature. or smells like. I mean, what exactly do you oh, disagree honey. with her on specifically? Oh my goodness. I'm saying that she is incredibly welcoming. She's gorgeous. By the way, cue any one of the like 100 clips from Tucker Carlson on the Bubba the Love Sponge show. Like, come on. Oh yeah, <laughs> objectifying women. Okay, Tucker, that's rich. <laughs> <laughs> and smart. I mean, she's in a lot of ways, uh, many elements of her persona are, uh, you know, admirable and something to look up to is what it, you know, is a joke. Okay, but, but you said that she is sinister, she has sinister complicity yes, in aiding the most. Yes, I absolutely believe that. Okay, I don't, so I'm not sinister, backing down from sinister, that at all. So it's sinister for a daughter to support her father's presidential campaign because you don't like her father? It's sinister for a daughter to capitalize on the power of feminism and uniting women and empowering women. Yes. While supporting oh, good. A it's a Yas Queen call out. I love it. Most anti-woman candidate this country has seen in decades.
What, what does that even mean? Like, why don't you tell I me? Mean, <laughs> he's anti. What, what is? What is that? What is? What sex? I don't even know what sex is. Misogyny. What are these made up words? This? Are you Dr. Seuss? Okay, I don't understand a word that's coming out of your mouth. He's anti-woman because is that what he I wants said? to. Defund Planned Parenthood. I'm sorry, said, is that what I said? I, I think my earpiece said, might not be working because that is most certainly not what I said. <laughs> okay. Nice. She's guilty because he's anti-woman. She's complicit in his, quote, anti-woman positions. To continue to I, stop let, and let support his again. positions. But it's her dad. I mean, I don't understand. So I guess the point I'm making is your... Have you never disagreed with your father, Tucker? Not even on a cold winter night? As Mr. Carlson looked down upon you from on high? Separated by the 13 maids, I'm sure. It's like, oh, son. What a disaster you turned out to be. You slid out on your mother's filth and grew into this. Silver spoons all around, and yet here you are. A consistent disappointment to me. One day, Tucker. One day. Drawing this kind of world where everyone who's not on your side no. is evil and I, is, as said, you put it, remotely. fair game. That's well, actually, not what I said. You said. Tucker, you said she's Tucker, called fair that's game. not what I said. She smells good. Tucker, I did not say anybody who disagrees well, what, okay, with me is evil. Then I'm going to ask you again. What do you disagree with that she has said? What position that she holds do you disagree with? I disagree with her providing a surrogacy for her father based on an empowerment of women when that is an inherent disconnect between his Wait, campaign so, and so her belief. You agree Beautiful. with her, but because she supported her dad, she I somehow never, I did not say game. I precisely what are you saying? aligned I'm, with her. I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand what you're saying. You, you're what not, that she believes, Tucker, don't you're you not believe. trying to agree. What even is patriarchy? I have, what do these words mean? They just sound like sounds to me. What is going on here? With what I'm saying, you're shouting over me every time I speak. It's, it's incredibly unprofessional. I'm asking you a simple question. You're not. Which is, you're actually is being a partisan hack who is just attacking me <laughs> well, ad nauseum and not hack. even allowing okay. me to speak. Well, let's yes. I think we agree here. Yes. I think we agree here. Right? Oh. I don't think we do. We both agree Laura. that she didn't deserve I think it's to be attacked. It's appalling that some guy yelled at her on an airplane and you're and saying I said she's that no fair one, game. I very clearly and calmly said that no one deserves to be yelled at on a plane. I don't want to be yelled at. I don't want to yell at you on a plane. I'll yell on you here, but you're not saying on a plane. that to me because I'm confronting you about it, but on Twitter. On your Twitter feed, where you scream "F oh, Donald he's having Trump," such a hard time. feces this Donald Trump, all this glorious. glorious. Wait, what? Well, I can't say the word you used, as you well know. But I let me said, I, I said, feces Donald Trump. That's what I said. You said, eat, in effect, human feces Tucker, on Twitter. Tucker, I can't, you know. Tucker, you are talking at this trivial, mundane level of argument. Okay. We're agreeing. Let me, let me Tucker, can okay. I ask you a question? Tucker, can well, I please? Let me ask you no, to I'd account like to for you something question. that you wrote. No, and, Tucker, and do you Trump. or do you not agree that we deserve, as the American people, a level of transparency in terms of Ivanka's role? I think we need to take her seriously and that she's a positive role model Look, and Lauren, admirable in a lot of ways, but that she still she, requires transparency she's in flying with what kids on she an represents airplane. in and terms of having a government people, position or being a businesswoman or being a mother. Okay, okay. So we do agree. I agree that anyone who's making decisions about how the federal government runs should have to answer questions Absolutely. about those decisions. Okay? I don't think you should hassle people because you disagree with them in public. And period. I didn't say you should. So, so we do. Here's Tucker, your, here, hey, we agree. We agree. <laughs> Here is hey. your description of the Trump administration. You wrote this piece in this Teen really Vogue, fun. which I, I guess agree. you write for. Oh, which you and guess you I said, write for? Yes, that's not fake news. That's real news. I write for, you guess? <laughs> oh, you guess, Tucker? You guess? That's well, really patronizing. I haven't, I haven't read Teen Vogue because I'm not a, a Teen Vogue Well, you reader, have in front of, your producers asked me if I wrote for Teen Vogue. You have my Teen Vogue article in front here, of you. Here's I'm, my you, name here's is Warren you, Duca and I write for Teen wrote. Vogue. Well, <laughs> here's what you wrote. Okay. The road ahead is a treacherous one. There are unprecedented amounts of ugliness to untangle from deciding whether our president can be an admitted sexual predator oh, to beautiful. figuring out how to stop him from threatening the sovereignty of an entire religion. Oh yes. yeah, I don't know. Like I, I don't know when it happened. Okay, you'd have to fill me in because again, yes, I, I have not been a teenager for some time. I'm older than the dirt I sleep in, children. But uh, Teen Vogue has been based, as far as I've seen, takes on Twitter. Like when people are like retweeting like Teen Vogue takes, I'm like, what the fuck? Whoa, yeah, that's that, not what I expected to see from like a very mainstream magazine.
What does it mean to threaten the sovereignty of religion? What does that even mean? That means an entire agenda, a platform of based on banning Muslims, which is still available on his website. How does that threaten the sovereignty of religion? That's moronic, Lauren. You're a writer. How does that threaten the sovereignty of it? Pardon me well, for taking what, yours does, literally. Sorry, how does what threaten the sovereignty of it? How, Threatening to ban how does Muslims? Any, that threatens the sovereignty of it? Yes, that completely, that, that profiles based on the basis of religion and reduces people to their beliefs and dictates what they can and cannot publicly uh, believe. That doesn't threaten the sovereignty of it. Um, so you, you also <laughs> well, obviously, on... because, you know, you're a white supremacist. So I, I imagine you don't see it that way. Chelsea Handler show of, quote, committing a form of psychological abuse that makes the victim feel like they're crazy. Does Trump yes. make you feel like you're crazy? That's the impression <laughs> I'm getting. Oh my God, are you calling me crazy? That's adorable. I'm, I'm asking That's you, you said so on Chelsea Handler, he's committing psychological abuse on you. Uh, you believe that? On the American people. I believe the American people, Trump supporters, Hillary supporters, Jill Stein and her cousin, are in a victim of Trump's gaslighting. What I mean by that is that he frequently contradicts objective evidence, not that oh. he is abusing me personally. And I think you're smart enough to know that, aren't you, Tucker? I don't know. I just take your words at face value. He's so did you read the entire article? He's psychological... I... I did. I also read Liam Payne is 100% certain One Direction will continue. Adriana yes. Grande rocked the most epic thigh-high boots at yeah. Jingle Bell and so Black team, China and Rob Kardashian. Went through the messiest breakup of 2016. Those are your other pieces. Ooh, yeah. I, I've run out of cards, so I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, some ad hom attacks here. You know, like, isn't it silly that you have such silly other articles? Why? How dare you try to be serious about something when all these other ones seem completely irrelevant to me? But I'm trying to get to what you're writing about Trump, taking have... a break from the thigh-high boots and ask what you mean about him committing psychological abuse on you. A and woman are you okay, can love Lauren? Ariana Grande and her thigh-high boots <laughs> okay, and yeah. still I'm discuss politics. Just letting you know that I read you politics. in Teen Vogue as of today. It's over and nine And those things are not mutually exclusive. You know, it's, it, now that yep. you bring up Teen Vogue, we, we, we treat young women like they don't have a right to a political <laughs> to a conversation. Bunch of, like, dumb propaganda. And like you can't be, you know, enjoy <laughs> Kylie Jenner's Instagram. <laughs> they just reduced the fucking name calling at the end. Dumb propaganda. You're all hacks, all of you. I win. Um, and worry about the future God. of this country. And those uh. things are not mutually exclusive. So you know what? I did write about Ariana Grande, and I did write uh -huh. about the abusive, bigoted, those pieces were a little smarter than your piece about threatening the, the sovereignty States. of a whole religion. All right, I gotta go. You should stick to the thigh high boots. You're better at that. Lauren, thanks Whoa. for joining us. Whoa. Definitely uh, got rid of that whole misogyny charge near the end there, Tucker. Well done. No one will ever think you're a misogynist. Oof, yeah, good save. Things are going a little bit rough there, but uh, I think I got the better of her, right? Uh, so that's the one that Tucker Carlson uh, decided to publish. That's the one that uh, Fox News has put online. But uh, there's another interview that Tucker Carlson had with the person on the left, which uh, he has refused to publish. But don't worry, it's been leaked. I try hard never to do on this show, and I was rude. I called him a moron, and then I modified that word with a vulgar, vulgar Anglo-Saxon term that is also intelligible in Dutch. In my defense, I would say that that was entirely accurate, but you're not allowed to use that word on television. So once I'd said it out loud, there was no airing the segment. Why don't you go f yourself, you tiny brain, and I hope this gets picked up. Because <laughs> you're a moron, I tried to give you a hearing, but you were too you can't handle the criticism, can you? I hear people talk in the language of participation and justice and equality and transparency. But then, I mean, almost no one raises the real issue of tax avoidance, right? And of the rich just not paying their fair share. I mean, it feels like I'm at a firefighters fighters conference and no one's allowed to speak about water. Well, let's see what they're all talking about then. Wagon, you're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. Yourself, you tiny brain, and I hope this gets picked up because you're a moron. I tried to give you a hearing, but you were too annoying for me. Uh, you can't handle the criticism, can you? Rutger Bregman. Is it Rutger? We gotta be Rutger talking Rutger about Bregman. Texas. Yeah, that's it. Texas, Texas, Texas. All the rest is bullshit, in, in my opinion. I mean, it feels like I'm at a firefighter's fighter conference, and no one's allowed to speak about water. Moments, maybe the great moment in Davos history. Rutger Bregman is the author of Utopia for Realists, and he joins us now. Mr. Bregman, I, I, I can't stop laughing just to that. 
<laughs> and, and part of that makes me wonder, are you the first person ever to note that people are flying private to talk about global warming and that none of them mention tax avoidance? Has anyone ever said that before at Davos that you know of? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on Davos history, but it is a bit hypocritical, isn't it? Got that joker I, and, laugh. And others have noted that. We've noted it on this show. We've just never gone to Davos and said it out loud as you did. So if I was wearing a hat, I would take it off to you. What was the, what response did you get? Well, I mean, they were not very happy with me. But I'm just, just a, I think, a, a, a random Dutch historian who's basically saying whatever on, around the globe is thinking. You know, the vast majority of Americans for years and years now, according to the polls, uh, including Fox News viewers and in including Republicans are in favor of higher taxes on the rich, you know, higher inheritance taxes, higher top marginal tax rates, uh, higher wealth taxes. It's all really mainstream. But no one's saying that at Davos, just as no one's saying it on Fox News, right? And I think the, the, the explanation for that is quite simple, is that most of the people in Davos, but also here on this channel, have been bought by the billionaire class. You know, you're not meant to say these things. So I just went there and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to say it, just as I'm saying it right here on this channel. <laughs> well, what was interesting, I thought, about what you said was that you noted something. I mean, many people have called for higher taxes, but very few Well, not on this channel, is it? I mean, almost all of the pundits on this channel for years have been against higher taxes, right? Even though the, the vast majority of Americans is in Maybe. favor of it. I mean, I would, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it would be interesting to know how many hours of Fox you've watched, but I'm interested in what you said mm -hmm. about tax avoidance. So yeah. I mean, just because someone faces a specific tax rate does not mean that person pays that mm -hmm. tax rate at all. I don't think Netflix, for example, paid any taxes last year mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So what would you do specifically to make certain that this class... So is that kind of him trying to avoid like i don't want you to increase personal taxes because look at this shiny thing right over here it's amazon they don't pay any right globalists all that kind of stuff george soros so so aren't we more concerned about them shouldn't we talk about them and the globalists rather than you know increasing taxes on the moderate to very wealthy people pays what they're supposed to pay well, it's about multiple things. So we should really crack down on tax paradises and on tax avoidance. That's a major issue. Yes. But it's also about having higher taxes. So in the 1950s, for example, in the 1960s, in the golden age of capitalism. By the way, as this, this one should apply to uh, everyone across the board. I know a lot of people seem to have this mentality right now that like if you make $200,000 a year, you're not really making that money. Uh, sorry, that much money, depending on like which city you live in or, or whoever it is. I still think you should be taxed uh, increasingly and proportionally in order to pay for the vast social welfare system that we're trying to advocate for at the very least as a stepping stone towards greater things, by the way. So if you have your needs met, uh, if you've got your own home, you've got yourself a car, all that kind of stuff, uh, then yes, I, I think you can be increasingly taxed more. I know all the moderate taxation policies right now, or even the, the ones proposed by the NDP in Canada, are like, we propose a 1% tax increase on people with $20 million or more. And I was like, sure, that shouldn't be controversial. That, that shouldn't even be a step, like a starting point. That, that should be just like, yes, why aren't we doing that already? Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, tax them. But people need to all honestly ask themselves, like, we have to understand that in order to pay for these vast things that we're always advocating for, uh, free uh, health care, pharmacare, dental care, uh, free, uh, you know, um, checks on uh, mental and health as well, things like that, uh, free uh, secondary college education, housing for everybody, housing for everyone, regardless of like, you know, uh, your, your income or status, but housing for every single human being, these things will be very expensive. Yes, there's that initial like, we should definitely shake the system uh, and get uh, reappropriating money into better ways, such as not spending, and if you're in America, nearly a trillion dollars every year on defense, uh, including the military industrial complex. Yes, that's all terrible. That money should be reappropriated into much more useful things. Again, like housing the homeless. This costs $20 billion a year. Like that's, it's not that much money. Um, but yeah, also we should be taxing everybody, including streamers, including the the the, the top 10,000 that we all know our numbers publicly. I, I'm in that list as well. Tax us. Tax, tax the fucks out of us. Historians called it. We had top marginal tax rate for the very- Where's my favorite place to hide my taxes? Obviously in Doge. No, wait, that one's not fucking memeable anymore. Obviously in Shibu coin. Fuck yeah. Got all the Shibu coin up in this. That's where all my money's being hid. You're never going to find it. Yeah. Good, good luck guessing that fucking wallet address.
very rich uh, of about, you know, 70, 80, 90 percent. Yes, yeah, stop bailing out oil companies, stop Eisenhower subsidizing oil companies. Company Absolutely. And this was also, you know, one of the best periods in American history. Same, same is true for the UK and, and the rest of Europe. Um, so Please as a historian, for me, it's all not, you know, it's it's really not rocket science. We should go, just go oh, yeah, back hold. to Buy the dip, simple hold. All straightforward that shit. solutions from the, pa from the past. Right, but this country was sustained, and since you're a historian, I guess you would know this, sustained mm -hmm. by an industrial economy at the time that was broad and deep, that, mm -hmm. that created a middle class. That doesn't exist anymore. So it's an entirely different economy. I wish it did exist. Oh well, but that's not that's not really an issue. I mean, work the same way with an entirely different economy. Well, I th I think it would. I mean, uh, America is still pretty much the most powerful country in the world, right? Richest too. So um, if it if it really would want to, it could easily crack down on uh, on tax paradises. But the thing is, I mean, you guys have brought into power a president that doesn't even want to show its own tax I returns. Uh, I mean, who knows how many billions he has hidden in the Cayman Islands or in Bermuda. Um, so I think the issue really is, is, is one of corruption and of people being bribed and of not being, you know, not talking about the real issues. Uh, what the family, you know, what the Murdochs basically want you to do is to scapegoat immigrants instead of talking about tax avoidance. So I'm, I'm glad you're now finally raising the issue. But that's what been been happening for the past couple of years. And I'm taking, I'm uh -huh. taking orders from the Murdochs, is that what you're saying? No, I mean, it doesn't work that directly. But, I mean, you've been part of the Cato Institute, right? You're, you've been a senior fellow there for well, years. How, how you've been, wait, you've how, been wait, taking wait, their wait, dirty wait, money. Wait, wait, They're funded <laughs> by <laughs> coke billionaires, you know? Wait, why don't you tell me how it does work? <laughs> well, uh, it works by you taking their dirty money. It's as easy as that. I mean, you are a millionaire funded by billionaires. by billionaires. That's what you are. And I'm glad you now finally jumped the bandwagon. That's the thing. That's that's what people need to remember. That slogan is so true. Like, so many of the propagandists, they are millionaires funded by billionaires to be able to change the way you think so that you vote against your own interests. That's, that's how the whole system works, baby. And, you know, of people like Bernie Sanders and AOC. But you're not you're not part of the solution, uh, Mr. Mr. Carlson. You're part of the problem. Mr. Actually. Carlson. AOC, wait, 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 but can I just say? And you, you, it's I'm true, right? It's true, right? That all the all the anchors, all the anchors on Fox, <laughs> they're all millionaires. How is this possible? Well, it's very easy. You're just not talking about certain things. <laughs> it doesn't play where you are. How oh, is that a rebuttal to any of that? <laughs> you, you you don't even get to watch Fox, all right? You, you you don't get our amazing contribution to the the world of media. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, have you heard of the internet? <laughs> I can watch things whatever I want, you know. I have actually. I, I, I'm, I'm on it right now. That's show, what I would have said. I do my homework when you invite me on your show. So. I mean, you're probably not going to air this, uh, but I went to Davos to speak truth to power, and I'm doing exactly the same thing right now. You might not like it, but you're a millionaire funded by billionaires, and that's the reason why you're not talking about these issues. But I am talking about these issues. Yeah, only now. Come on, you jumped the bandwagon. You're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. You. Why don't you go f yourself, you tiny brain? And I hope this gets picked up because <laughs> you're a moron. I tried to give you a hearing, but you were too f annoying for me. Uh, you can't handle the criticism, can you? <laughs> Super good, super amazing, fantastic, and uh, I guess we may have forgotten what the whole point of the segment was, but uh, Joe Rogan, you're wrong. You're, you're once again factually incorrect. Tucker Carlson is not platforming anyone. He's not talking to just about anybody. He talks to people who are most likely going to regurgitate the points that he wants to talk about. He has a narrative, and uh, more often than not, when things don't go his way, you can see what happens, aka those two examples, you know? That's all you'll need. Hey, do you, do you, do you like movies? Do you, do, you like, do you like surfs? 
do you want do you want do you want movies and surf surfs watching the movies so then come over to the new channels it's the surf the cinema thanks so much for watching everybody can you do the thing you know that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives also if you happen to have a facebook account um can you can you delete it like just just delete it you should probably delete your facebook account because it's just it's not a great company, but hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, may you shower us mortals with gifts from the heaven. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your humble jesters, clowning around for your amusement. To our lord, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, we give you our thanks for this meager land for us to toil our seed. To our knights of the round table, Hagvard Sealine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, ants are still running the world, Coulter Smith, Tom Grow, Val9000, Jenna Tal, Dark Puppy, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janice, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Chronic de Hemphog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our glasses and we salute you, our comrades.